Hey, what's up everybody? This is Nick from Part-Time Pilot. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the common cockpit instrumentation that you will find in your aircraft as a private pilot. Uh, we're gonna go over what they are briefly, what they're used for, and then we're going to point you to videos we have that go in depth on the systems that they are a part of and how they work in depth. Let's get to it. The first one you're gonna have is the magnetic compass. It's gonna sit on the top of your dash. The magnetic compass uh, tells you the direction you're going, the magnetic direction you're going, and on the magnetic compass, you're gonna have a little card. That's the deviation card. So the instrumentation in and the metals in your aircraft will actually cause an error on that magnetic compass. Uh, so that deviation card will help you correct for those errors. And then you're gonna use the magnetic compass anytime your heading indicator fails you. And then you're also gonna use it to calibrate your heading indicator. Okay, the next instrument uh, is one of the six packs of instruments we have here, and it's the altimeter. Uh, we have a video popping up right here that you can click on that goes in depth on how that works, but basically it senses pressure and gives you an altitude. Uh, so it's uh, critical to know how that works as well as the altimeter setting. Next, we have the attitude indicator. This is one of the most important uh, indicators and instruments you have on your aircraft. It gives you an artificial horizon and an artificial aircraft. It is run by the vacuum system, so it's a vacuum system gyroscope inside there, and it allows you to tell the orientation or attitude of your aircraft in relation to the horizon. So, it's, so you'll want to be familiar and confident in knowing how to use this in cases of low visibility so that you can maintain uh, a good uh, knowledge of what the attitude is of your aircraft. Next, we have the airspeed indicator. Uh, you'll want to know the different operating ranges, uh, green, yellow, uh, as well as the flap operating ranges of this instrument. This is part of the pitot-static system. Uh, it, it makes an airspeed by measuring the difference between the pitot air and the static air pressure, called a dynamic pressure. And if you want more information on that, you can click up here uh, to get an understanding of how that works. Next up, we have the turn coordinator. Turn coordinator can be powered by a vacuum or electrically. Uh, in most older aircraft, it's uh, vacuum powered. Uh, and the turn coordinator is going to tell you your angle of bank here on the side, as well as whether your turn is coordinated or not. So this little ball here in the middle, if that's off to the right uh, or left, then your turn, your turn is not coordinated. And they say step on the ball. So if the ball is to the right, you're gonna step on the rudder pedal, the right rudder pedal to get that centered. Uh, so you always wanna keep that centered during your turns, keep your turns coordinated so you don't stall or spin during your turns. Uh, the heading indicator, we talked about this with the altimeter, you use that for navigation, or sorry, we talked about that with the compass. Uh, so again, you'll before takeoff, you'll calibrate that with the compass. And then whenever you're in straight and level flight, you'll want to calibrate that with the compass for navigation. And this is another vacuum system uh, indicator. And well, right here in the top right, I just popped up a vacuum system detailed video if you want to learn more about how the vacuum system works. And then finally, we have the vertical speed indicator. This is part of the pitot-static uh, system. It uses static air, and then it basically computes the change in static air pressure over time. And, and determines uh, a change in altitude over time. So this is important for your takeoffs and landings uh, to match the uh, climb or descent rates that you are, are hoping to get. And then again here we have a video popping up where you can go into detail on that. All right, so now we'll get into sort of the fuel system in, uh, instruments and gauges. You have your fuel gauge here. Uh, you're gonna have a, a left tank gauge and a right tank gauge. Uh, you'll want to obviously make sure that th what's reading on there before you take off matches visually what you see in the tanks. Um, uh, but those are your engine gauges. And then here, you're gonna, you might have, not all aircraft have these, but you'll have more information on the fuel system. You might have fuel pressure or you will have a fuel consumption uh, or fuel flow rate in gallons per hour uh, that tells you how much fuel is going into the engine. Uh, okay, down here we have the oil system. So the oil system is key in telling us the health of our engine. So we have a temperature gauge. Oops, sorry. We have a temperature gauge on this side and a pressure gauge on this side. Uh, so we'll always want to monitor these if they are too high or too low. Uh, 
that could mean something very bad with our engine so we'll want to keep a close eye on that uh, then another last uh, engine gauge is the tachometer so it records the hours that your engine's been running and it also tells you uh, the RPM has an RPM gauge and you'll want to get familiar with the normal operating range as well as the maximum RPM for your aircraft and then over here we have so these these can be separate on most aircraft but on this one it's sort of here in the same dial we have a vacuum system gauge or a vacuum suction gauge the vacuum system has a regulator which keeps is keeps the suction pressure within a normal operating range and if that is not within the normal operating range it could damage or make the vacuum instruments the instruments that run off the vacuum faulty or or break right so you want to make sure that that has the right amount of suction and then on the other side here we have uh, an ammeter this measures the amps uh, through your electrical bus so this tells you the health of your electrical system and yes we do have a video breaking down the electrical system it's important you know and understand how that works as a private pilot uh, and this again you want to make sure this is in a good operating range if it's too high or too low uh, then you're going to check your emergency procedures and see uh, what steps to take um, for that. And then over here, we have some navigation type uh, instrumentation. We have uh, VOR1 and VOR2. They're the same thing. They're just uh, duplicated. And those link uh, to the nav radio. So VOR1 links to nav radio 1 and VOR2 links to nav radio 2. And uh, so whatever frequency you dial in for on nav radio 1 will link up to VOR1. And then whatever frequency you dial in for VOR on nav radio 2 will link up to VOR2. And then finally down here we have an ILS or instrument landing system. So this is going to tell you your position on center line as well as your uh, position on glide slope. Most uh, you might not learn about this as a private pilot, more something for instrument rating. But if you do have this instrument, it's a very handy instrument and it would be helpful for you to learn how to use it. Uh, so that is an ILS. And then finally, you might have seen this instrument over here. This it tells you the outside air temperature and is also a clock. So the clock is helpful in cross-country planning checkpoints, uh, checkpoint timing uh, between different checkpoints. And then the outside air temperature is always a little handy piece of information to know. These are usually found up here in the top left corner. Okay, so thank you for watching. I do want to ask you guys one question. This is the common set of instrumentation uh, found, but if there is an instrument that is in your aircraft that you train on or that you own, please comment below what that instrument is. I'm curious to know. I know that there's other instrumentations out there that some aircraft have AOA sensors uh, and goal of attack sensors, and some have more uh, like pressure transducers, stuff like that. So comment below. Let me know what you got on your aircraft, and um, thanks for watching.